Well, I need a haircut. Hello? Hi, YouTube. It's pasta. Um, today I'm going to do something special. I have um, this yeast. I've used it. I've been uh, re kind of been reusing it for five different honey batches. And then for that five honey batches, I used or I asked the liquor fairy to make me some honey vodka and each time it gets better and better. So today I'm gonna do it. We're gonna make the mash for the honey vodka again. And it's gonna be with, well, with the liquor fairy distilling it for me. So it's gonna be the six honey vodka batch and I'll show you. Okay, so what we got here is I got the the Home Depot allegedly <laughs> five gallon bucket. And what I bought here one of these for my honey vodka mashes the raw and unfiltered Texas honey and it's 12 pounds, if you're wondering. And then, I'm also gonna do a little bit separate. Grabbing from the fridge, excuse me. This is Manuka honey, raw Manuka honey. This costs like 30 bucks to buy it, but I'm curious what it would taste like in a mash, so I'm gonna combine this with this Texas honey to come up with a new flavor. And then, of course, I'm gonna take the cherries out, but my last mash was made with, with cherries. So I'm going to strain the, um, the cherries out and I'm just going to add all the yeast in there and here. So I'm going to keep it in the fridge for now until I need it. Okay, so I got the honey. I'm just going to pour it right in there. Uh, honey can be very viscous. And then after you, if you would pour all the honey in there, it would be a good idea to add warm, a gallon of warm water to mix it up and stir it. This to, to make sure to get all the honey out. And use some warm water again. I'm gonna use some warm water again with the other type of honey. So let me get back to you on that after I'm done pouring the honey in and mixing it. Now, one other thing. Now, this honey, I heard it was medicinal. That is, a lot of people been going crazy over it, so I was wondering it would be interesting to have that as a spirit, hypothetically, so why not? This particular brand is raw and unpasteurized, non-GMO, Produced and packed in New Zealand, free of antibiotics and glyphosate. And I guess it's traceable from hive to home. I'm not sure that's important, but probably not. And uh, on a side note, when I when I taste this honey, it tastes like honey, obviously, but with licorice. <laughs> And maybe it's something to do with the bees pollinating in New Zealand, but I didn't expect to have this licorice taste. It's quite interesting. Okay, so I was interrupted, but it was whatever. I was using my fifth generation meaties 
the yeast I've been t telling you about. Well, let me give you a little background history. This first started off as a turbo yeast. I used it on, on a mead. I figured, oh, when it tastes like honey, then I got the liquor fairy, and it tastes good. Then I did it a couple, like three, three more times. It was starting to get better and better. Then, then one more try. The last try, I tried it with honey, but it's like, and cherries. See? And that came out amazing. And I have, um, like a fairy did a great job distilling it so it's in my room right now um i have a little bit of left so i've been pouring all the these i have into here and of course i'm going to take the the cherries out don't worry the cherries have been served with the and with the mead and with the fridge like five months. I guess it'll be a little sourdough type, but we'll see. Um, I think mostly it's going to be sweet, and then now I, since I tasted the, the Manuka honey that is added in there as well, I'm expecting to have some licorice flavor. So this is going to so this is going to be a little bit of licorice some cherries, cherry notes, and then, then lots of honey. So yeah, I'm just gonna top this off and then I'm gonna let it ferment. Then of course we're gonna teabag this and I'm done. Okay. I'm not sure you can see it, but it's floating at the 10% mark, which is for your gravity point nerds like me. Oh, jeez. Doesn't stop moving. Is that. One point. Damn, this. I'm sorry. There's too much foam in the way. One point zero seven five. I guess. One point seven. It's close to 1.80, which is really 1.76, 1 1.76, gravity point. So this is my honey vodka, my honey cherry vodka. I did forgot to mention I added like a dash of vanilla extract in, in, the, in the last mash before the liquor fairy distilled it for me it's pretty good it tastes the honey and then with the contrast of the tart cherries it balances out the overall overall sweetness of the of the honey it's my beard is a little scruffy um it's very good um i think you can use it on tea if you ever to make it and and if you do make it i'm not responsible for whatever happens to you <laughs> so so yeah so this would be good on tea this would be good with um with apple juice i guess maybe with coca-cola too this can add like a nice 
honey cherry milk to the to Coca Cola or Pepsi, or maybe even Mountain Dew, whatever you prefer. Oh, and on the side note, Mountain Dew is is another term for moonshine. So, there you go. Um, now you learned something new if you haven't learned that al already. All right, if you do like this video, uh, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the, no and the notification bell so you can see new content whenever you're on YouTube. Um, I know it's been two weeks since the last time, about two weeks since the last time I posted, posted a video, um, but brewing takes, takes time, um, actually I was doing a experimental brewing project, it's which I'll discuss in the next video. Um, if you're wondering why my eyes look so tired right now, it's because I worked overnights. And uh, so I'm gonna tell you later when I look <laughs> more awake and hopefully with a haircut. Um, so I'll see you later. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye.